the conjecture I made does turn out to be true if you solve it carefully. But the solution doesn't look all that good. This little argument we've made so far at least makes it plausible. If you've got 50% of the scattering coming back and 50% going forward, at least it's plausible that you might have an even distribution. And I don't think I really have the stomach to go through the whole thing and prove it properly. Does it involve now taking the 22 and a half degree point? Like from 45 degrees to 22 and a half degrees, and then you can prove that a quarter of them bounce off in the first quarter, in the first ha um, yeah. half 45 degrees. Yeah. And the, so it's like, okay. Yeah, I would actually uh, go to, go to the, my next case as uh, examining. I'd like to take three critical angles now at uh, 30 and 60 degrees. Everything that bombards this, the ball within this sector, comprising a 30 degree angle, reflects in a cone of 60 degrees. Everything that intersects this sector between the 30 and the 60 degree mark will tend to scatter in a sector of 60 degrees, between 60 and 120. And everything that impinges on the sphere between 60 and 90 degree mark comprises the scattered portion, which scatters off in the remaining 60 degrees of available, available arc. And then I'd have to go back to uh, the front cross-section and do a lot of careful calculations to showing, showing how the proportions of incident stuff relates to the reflected stuff. And I, I think I'll just show you how, how that shapes up. The stuff between the North Pole and the 60th parallel of latitude, that makes up a quarter of the circle. The stuff between the 30th parallel of latitude and the equator, that makes up a quarter of the incident circle. And the stuff between the 30th parallel and the 60th parallel constitutes 50% of the circle. And what we have to relate those proportions to is uh, the outgoing particles corresponding to different angular sectors than the incoming particles. I don't really want to do it. It's going to be hard. I'd like to give it as a problem for next week. It, it's the pumpernickel problem. It's an amazing fact of spheres, which is related to the problem I gave last week, and it's a problem I should have given, which is if you have a spherical pumpernickel and cut equal slices, one inch thick, then, and distribute the slices to people, everyone gets a different amount of bread. Well, that's obvious. But what's the funny thing is that the person who gets this slice and the person who gets a slice from near the end, they both get the same amount of crust. An amazing fact. And I would like to encourage our viewers to consider this problem and try it out for themselves.
you have a spherical pumpernickel, you cut it into one inch slices. Every slice is the same thickness. Everyone gets a different amount of bread, but incredibly, they all have the same amount of crust. Think about it and maybe you can see why it should be true. And I think that's all I want to talk about the properties of spheres today. Now, normally we, we save the musical portion of the show for the end, but I think it's about time for the song now. And uh, we got a special treat because today Neil's going to do the singing. This guy can sing like a bugger, so I want you to listen up and <laughs> see what he can do. 